So good morning, John Robin Warren. Uh, welcome to <laughs> to Universidad Francisco de Vitoria. It's a real honor and pleasure for us uh, uh, to have you here in this uh, particular and special occasion. I just uh, wanted you to to comment um, on how do you feel for this honor of being appointed as Doctor Honoris Causa for this uh, university. Well, it's always an honor to be honored by one of my other universities. <laughs> I don't know what else I can say. Yeah, <laughs> this is your second time in, in Spain, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, it's, I think, my third time, but this is the yeah. second time for this, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, wh why do you think the university is acknowledging you uh, as, as Dr. Honoris Causa? I guess because of the work that I did. If it's not that, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is it about? What is the special uh, of the work that you did in the past? Well, the work that I did was to find the bacteria that cause ulcers. Mm -hmm. And then with Barry Marshall together, we actually proved that they do cause peptic ulcers and that you can cure peptic ulcer disease by eradicating the bacteria. And uh, what is the impact of that discovery? Well, except for the fact actually that uh, pharmaceuticals have come a long way since mm -hmm. then. Okay. And you can now control ulcer disease very well with pharmaceuticals, which you couldn't back then. Mm -hmm. But um, it actually enabled you to eradicate peptic ulcer disease from patients by treating the infection. Yeah. Was, uh, was it easy for you uh, to find your final discovery? <laughs> it was easy for me. I just saw them. Yeah. And what happened after that? Well, I kept looking for them, and once I started looking for them, I saw them quite often. Yeah. Once you look for them, they're easy to see. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of looking when, and keeping your mind open. Uh, what happened with the scientific community and your discovery at the very first time when you just uh, released and communicated re the first results of your, of your findings? Well, we, uh, we released our results in the literature uh, two years later. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it was very widely believed. Why not? Well, it was against all the uh, ideas at the time. And no one, I mean, first of all, we just published the, um, the fact that we saw bacteria there and that we thought they were causing ulcers. And everybody knew bacteria didn't grow in the stomach and everybody knew that ulcers were caused by stress and poor diet and spices and alcohol. and. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, no one believed this. And how do you think was the clue uh, for you and, and Barry Marshall to convince your colleagues of the scientific community, which was on the, on the previous old paradigm? Well, I think mainly time. Yeah. Actually, when we published our uh, definitive article in 1984, the next two years, there were a whole mass of similar articles mm -hmm. published around the world by people who were obviously trying to prove we were wrong yeah. and failed. They all got the same, same results we did. So you, uh, are, you, are you both conscious of that you have, um, uh, uh, I mean, you have driven a, a true uh, paradigm shift in medicine, which of the, one of the biggest, just jumping from, a, let's say, a psychologically driven disease, as it was regarded peptic ulcer in the beginning, into a, an infectious disease? Well, I'm conscious of the idea, yeah. It's, um, I mean, it, it was actually a very strongly held idea, first of all, that no bacteria grew in the stomach, yeah. and secondly, that uh, ulcers were caused by other things. They were both strongly held ideas, and trying to tell people that bacteria that weren't there were causing ulcers that were caused by something else was a little bit difficult. Yeah. And it really was only time which managed, I mean, apart from the fact that around the world people tried to prove we were wrong and failed. It didn't seem to make any difference. No one, st st they just still didn't believe it. Yes. So, what, uh, what would you say to the uh, uh, to the medical students of uh, of this university with regards to um, how they should proceed in order to succeed and add value to uh, to people in the current environment, which is sometimes very complex? Well, I would suggest for doctors they should always keep their eyes and their minds open. Yeah. And uh, don't jump to any funny conclusions without any evidence, but mm -hmm. if they've got good evidence, you know, the evidence of their own eyes, uh, they should follow it up. 
Do you think it is easy to uh, try to alter or to challenge the, the statu quo? Well, I didn't find it easy to challenge the status quo, um, but I didn't find it very difficult to, to convince myself because I had really very strong evidence that you know, I could see bacteria there, I could photograph them and show them to people. They still didn't believe it, <laughs> but I could do that. Um, and for me, it was very strong evidence that they were there and growing there, mm -hmm. um, even though they weren't supposed to be there. Do you think you could have driven that um, paradigm shift on your own, this means alone, or what was the role of Barry Marshall in, in this story? Well, Barry Marshall enabled us to widen the whole study mm -hmm. so that what I was doing was just pathology. Yes. Uh, I suspect that just being pathology, if I'd published, which I, I mean, my original publication is the letter, was actually a copy of the mm -hmm. original study that I was doing when I first met Barry Marshall. It's just my work. It's not our joint work, Barry Marshall's letter at the same time. We published two letters at once and my letter was just my old work, his letter was our joint work. Yes. Um, I think if I just published my work, and you can see my work if you go and read my letter, yeah. um, it probably would have died. No one would have been interested, no one would have believed it, and that probably would have been the end of it. But um, with Barry Marshall's work as well, going into the, you know, we actually cu uh, cultured the bacteria, and that was a very strong point. We actually had the bacteria, you know, this new variety of bacteria was recognised by the, uh, the um, uh, I forgot what you call it, the people who collect varieties of bacteria in England. Uh, and the, uh, uh, not, not the Lancet? No, no, the, the people who actually have, that, you know, they grow all yeah. varieties of bacteria yes. and they've got um, examples of them in their collection, you know. Mm -hmm. They put our sa a sample in their collection and yeah. told us it was officially a new variety of bacteria mm -hmm. that they hadn't had before. So we managed to do that, which I wouldn't have been able to do myself just working as a pathologist looking at slides. But Barry could because he could see the patient and send down a sample for culture. Yeah. So. Um, also he could see which patients had what and we found out that the patients with duodenal ulcers all had the bacteria. So, you know, we, we're showing that the very strong evidence the bacteria were closely related to duodenal ulcers, at the, even at that early stage. You know. um, was it easy for you to have a very good teamwork at the end of the day? Well, with Barry Marshall, we worked very well together, I think. Yeah, yeah. from the very beginning. In fact, you didn't know each other uh, No, at the we didn't know each other, but, but, I mean, he actually added to my work. We didn't cross over or argue about anything. He, I did my work. He did his work and the two combined perfectly. Okay, so it was absolutely complimentary. Yeah. yeah for that. Okay. And I think he was complimentary to me. I mean, I like sort of quietly working at my microscope and he liked talking to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, how, uh, how did you feel when uh, you were nominated or appointed as a Nobel laureate because of your joint work? Mm. Well, when, <laughs> when we received the phone call, I was a bit amazed. I didn't believe it to first to start with, but, but um, yeah, that was, it was very nice. But don't you think that uh, your discovery uh, truly deserves such an honor because of the impact that it has, yeah. it has caused in the, in the global population worldwide? Well, Barry suggested at an early stage that we might be onto something that could get it. Um, yeah. I, I thought he was being silly. I mean, for me, it was just a matter of finding, an, finding funny bacteria in a funny place. Yeah. Um, I didn't think you got a Nobel Prize for that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, in the end, our combined work and so on apparently did. I'm not going to argue with them. It looks like. <laughs> so you've got uh, the Nobel laureate and you got the Dr. Honoris Causa by the Universidad Francisco de Vitoria. Yeah. So as, uh, I think that you have such a big honor anyway and uh, it will happen worldwide. So yeah. thank you very much for your words and uh, looking forward to uh, today's ceremony and uh, yeah. to work together in the following days and, and months. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah.